let's investigate Office's destruction. It's great to see this map still shitting for beefy computers, even when they haven't received an upgrade since 2004. And these computers break apart piece by piece, just like they did in CSGO, and just like they did in Counter-Strike Source. So this is a nice little detail that has remained unchanged for about 20 years. Unfortunately, the damage has been toned back elsewhere. These monitors used to split in two if shot, but now simply show bullet holes on them. Now, I've personally never shot a monitor before, so this could be more realistic, but it feels like a step back. Similarly, in Counter-Strike Source, keyboards would lose their keys when shot, but the ones in Counter-Strike 2 just fly off and receive glass-looking bullet holes. Major step back here. Also, I notice when you stand on these things, these bullet holes latch onto your feet. Valve, please fix. These folders used to get shot apart gradually over several shots, but now don't even move. These cans behave roughly the same as before, flying off at the speed of sound when shot. The radio has been downgraded, and I think I know why. Back in the earliest version in Counter-Strike Source, the technology was there for it all to work as it should, with the radio splitting into three different parts when shot. Yet in CS2, look what happens to the antenna. It disappears, and the handle just hovers there. Not sure why it does that, but the antenna, I think I know why that's been removed for CS2. Because if we load up CSGO, check this out. Fortunately, the computer mice and telephones behave about the same as always, bouncing about the map at high velocity when shot. The bins house a dark secret. They are physics objects which contain more physics objects within, which in the world of source-based physics equals chaos as they all vibrate against one another, sometimes exploding wildly across the map. The ones in CS2 do not. I don't really know how to describe its behaviour. It's as though the bins ignore most of the gunshots but will occasionally react properly to being shot. The contents of these bins behaves about the same as before, but it's all lit better in Source 2, and all of the little bits of paper and so on have ambient occlusion trying to shade them correctly no matter where they may land. Check out all these blobby little shadows around everything, which is a marked improvement over Counter-Strike Source's questionable looking shadows. But a lot of things, like these cabinets and chairs, are now fixed in place, which I presume was done to stop sneaky players from blocking corridors with them, because their physics were always a bit questionable. But not everything has been toned down. If you shoot the snow outside, it leaves a 3D looking hole, and how it looks depends on the angle from which the bullet penetrates the snow, with shallow angles leaving longer trails. Isn't that cool? You could do a crime scene investigation with this. And I also love these new fabric bullet decals, which manages to retain the same colour as the material that it's penetrated, but it gives the impression that it's been ripped apart, revealing the cheap foamy layer underneath. But these new details feel like consolation prizes when the chairs themselves no longer behave like chairs should. Vending machines are one aspect that could be considered to be an improvement. Back in Counter-Strike Source, you couldn't move them, but could use them to dispense drinks. And each time you use them, you'd hear a coin being inserted and a bottle would roll out, within reason. Now in CS2, you can't use them anymore, but if you shoot them, then they will deplete their entire stock of drinks, which is a design flaw if you ask me. Certainly wouldn't be usable in America. But better still, these vending machines can be moved, ever so slightly, every time you use a grenade on them. But with enough time and effort and grenades, you can shift one of these things enough to be able to shoot it over and to use it as makeshift cover. But look what's left behind. The light from where this vending machine used to be is still active, which is wrong, and the hole that's left cannot be entered as it has been invisibly clipped off. However, if you go into noclip, then obviously you can enter this area, and when in this mode, it's very easy to push these vending machines out of the world entirely. That's right, Office now dispenses vending machines. You used to be able to shoot all these pictures and details off the walls, but they're all now fixed in place, which I'm sad about. And this table can't be shot apart either. And neither can the plant pots. Shooting the projector still destroys it, which is just as well or else there would be riots. And the glass in Counter-Strike Source was quite unique in that it would break but would remain in place until shot more, or run through. I was always a fan of these breakable surfs, but acknowledged that their broken state did make visibility through them worse. It was an old strategy of mine to use the broken glass as camouflage. So now in Counter-Strike 2 they shatter in one shot, and although many of you complain about this, it does make sense and is a lot better than CSGO's windows were, which also completely break in one shot, but underwhelmingly so as a whole window turns into about a quarter of a window's worth of glass shards. So in that sense, CS2 seems to be the best of both worlds, combining the shattering of CSS with the visibility of CSGO. And I've seen people arguing that the glass should shoot out in the same direction as the bullet is heading, but that isn't how glass works. The bit that's hit by the bullet? Sure, 
but the rest of the glass should all be reacting to the rest of the glass reacting. And if I slow stuff down, then you can see that the glass travels away from and towards where the shot was fired from. It's just that as the person shooting the glass, you'll normally only see the bits heading towards you. It's a nice effect, people, especially in slow motion. Shooting hostages, though, has unfortunately received a major nerf. No more blood spatters on their person, no more moving, screaming mouths, no more puppy dog eyes pleading with you to stop, and no more crumpling to the floor once deceased. No, instead bullets appear to deflect off them, and sure, they'll still utter a brief R every few seconds or so, but you can't kill them. It's not exactly the most convincing display, is it? Fortunately, the snowman appears untouched, behaving exactly the same in Counter-Strike 2 as it was in a game from 20 years ago, right down to the unusually heavy rolled head. But sadly, bullet holes no longer appear on it, rendering this game unplayable. So all in all, a major step backwards for destruction on Office, where at best it might remain the same as Counter-Strike Source, and at worst, any interactability is lost completely. 